Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. Uh, today I had the pleasure of speaking to one of my good friends, Toby Hanbury. Uh, we were at uni together and had a lot of interesting business conversations over the years and it's been great to see him and, and hear him talk about his journey from setting up a business in his parents' front bedroom to getting warehouse space and building a proper sustainable business, uh, which is awesome. We talked about that journey. We talked about his industry, which is uh, automated retail and uh, selling healthy products. Um, And uh, we talked about the good old uni days. So hope you enjoy it. Hey, it's Lewis. Welcome to the podcast. Enjoy our conversations anytime, anywhere. Boom! And we're live. Boom's my new tagline. I keep saying it all the time, so I'm going to make sure I'm consistent and say it on every podcast now. <laughs> Toby. Chill. Boom backwards is mood. That is true. That is true. You and you... <laughs> I do. <laughs> and yours are much bigger now than they were a few years ago. So you've not been eating your healthy snacks <laughs> Maybe I eat too many of my healthy stuff. <laughs> that is true. Um, I was, we were just saying off, off air <laughs> that, um, that we started uni together 20 years ago. This year. 1999. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Um, we should go back to Magaluf and have a... Uh, is that where we first met? Yeah, I think so. Yes, it was before 1999. Yeah. Uh, no, it was summer 1999. Yeah, before we started university. Yeah. Crazy, who thought we'd have been sitting doing a podcast together 20 years on? Who even thought of podcasts 20 years ago? Who even thought we'd have our own businesses 20 like years ago? It's like a radio ago? show, actually. Yeah. The cool thing is that um, with technology now, you can literally just plug in. It costs nothing. And the world can uh, the world can hear your thoughts. And it's crazy. We started out doing the uh, using um, lapel mics. Right. Um, but now, so we did like the first few with lapel mics and then to upgrade and get better sound quality, we invested in this little mixer and these two cool mics with arms, which you can swizzle and stuff, um, Brilliant. which is great. It's a cool setup. Yeah, thanks. So when I was uh, about 11, I realised that if you've got a pair of headphones and you plug them into the microphone jack of a radio and you spoke into one of the headphones, one of the earphones, it was a microphone. Really? Yeah. So I I used to, I used to plug it into a little ra- uh, radio that I had. I used to broadcast my back garden and I had my little radio. <laughs> nice. Station. At uni in the first year, I really liked, well, I love hip hop and I wanted to be on the radio. So I don't know if you remember, but I, I managed to Did get the- audition for the radio? Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I auditioned I to go on- that. Yeah, yeah. I, I auditioned to go on there. Uh, on like the university, it was like hip hop hour was like, I think it was like 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. or something. And so the guy who was the DJ, who was like third or fourth year, was like, yeah, man, like come in and stuff. And he was like starting to like grill me on all the hip hop music I knew, which I then realized I knew none. Um, <laughs> so my audition lasted about five minutes and he was like, uh, yeah, this might not be for you, mate. He was like, go select your best tune. And like, I was looking through the records and I just found like Snoop, just Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. And he was like, do you know anything else? I was like, mm, not really. That was, when my, that was when my radio career started and ended. I've never listened to hip hop, so. Fair enough. Sorry. Fair enough. So um, you are an entrepreneur. And how did you start Thanks, um, the healthy vending company? How'd it come about? Well, if you recall, I bought into a healthy vending franchise. Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Was this straight after university? Or how? No, after uni, I uh, was with UJS for the year. Yeah. And I moved on. I was wanted to be in food retail, food service. And I worked for a sandwich company. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Oh, sandwich company. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I ran uh, two of the outlets, which was, it was really good fun. I enjoyed it. But it was hard work. I decided, um, and then after that, I left and I went traveling with Emma. Yeah, who's now my wife. So that was good. Nice. That was a good, good move. plan. Um, and I sat around for a while, 
not doing very much. In fact, someone said to me, he goes, you're going nowhere fast. <laughs> I can't remember who it was, but it was, I was sitting around. It was for a summer. It was a good bit of a laugh. Probably Adam. It might have been my dad. Anyway, so I went to a franchise exhibition because what I really wanted was a Domino's or a Subway. Nice. That would have been good. And franchises in the family. Yeah, my dad. Um, my dad was a franchisee of uh, Cool Quick Printing. Cool. So he, I think he was the first franchise Cool Quick franchisee. Nice. In the UK, um, when it, it used to be Quick Coffee in the US. So fr- I mean, franchising was a great, a great thing. But we're really far yeah, yeah. behind the US on on that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I joined a healthy vending franchise. It was it was on the pulse at the time. Jamie Oliver was going into all the schools and oh, yeah, yeah, talking yeah. about yeah. Um, healthy this and unhealthy that. Um, but they turned out to not be very good people. Um, why, why not? I won't get into detail. Um, they weren't very good people. Um, and their model wasn't working and it wasn't advancing. Um, back then, there wasn't, many, there wasn't much product. Oh, I see. But the franchise so, model itself, they... Was a good way for you to start to get all the infrastructure and yeah, I guess so. I mean, I probably had a good education in how not to do things. Perfect. Um, it, it Wait, so this is went... so, so just to wind back. So this is a this is a vending machine franchise. Yeah, fine. Effectively, they would yeah. have been better with a licensing model. Fine. Um, fine. What's the difference? Is there much? Of a... Similar, <laughs> similar. Yeah, 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 they are similar, but it's just it's it's not something that w- would be of vast importance. Fine, this fine. Time. And so, at what point did you? How long did you do the franchise for? We um, it was about three or four years before I really got going with the healthy vending company. Fine, okay. So, so it gave you a nice like runway to. We weren't really doing much business with the with the franchise, um, so we say we. I was looking to pull away, pulling away took a while. So you did it on your own, and then start starting with. again and getting going took quite a while. Um, but back then, I was doing it from my parents' garage. Awesome, running the business from a from a. It's like Steve Jobs. What was the playroom in my parents' <laughs> house <laughs> when we were kids? Was became a stop a stock room. Amazing. So yeah, it was good fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you had some vending machines out. You had the product in your parents' house, and then you'd be filling, selling. I would be out in the morning, filling machines, back out selling on the phone, Amazing. just doing everything. Um, but it was there wasn't a lot of product. It was diffi- It was actually more difficult to find product than it was um, to do anything else. So what, why did you why did you decide to do like healthy rather than Coke, chocolate, and as I said, because I'd started because of Jamie making, Oliver I, stuff and yeah, I'd gone into a healthy vending franchise and fine, I had fine. healthy vending machines out. Ah, uh, okay, fine, fine. So yeah. if I was going to pull away from a franchise, I had to do healthy vending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we called ourselves the Healthy Vending Company. Awesome. It wasn't um, taken. It wasn't taken. No one else was doing it. There's a few players in the market now. Yeah. Um, but as I say, you just couldn't get the product, and it was a bit. Hair is of how are we going to film these machines? And the difference now is that actually, I mean, we, you know, day in, day out, new brands, new products, new new innovation, exciting new things, different ways of um, producing snacks and drinks using different ingredients. Um, the most recent thing that's really quite fun is the black eyed. Black Eyed Pea Puff Snacks, Beps. Really? Is that um, made by the Black Eyed Peas? No, it's not made by the Black Eyed Peas. I don't <laughs> think. But it's really not. Nice. It's just different examples. What is it? A pea? Well, they take a black... They take a, 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 you have to ask them how they make them. What Maybe is it? I'll, just ask like a... they, I'll ask them how they make them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So on that, so how do you select all these products? How do you find about them? Do they just send you... They tend to come to us. And they send you samples and yeah, stuff? Yeah. Nice. Constantly receiving new products, new brands... Um, and in essence, there's only finite space in the machines. Yeah, yeah. And there's only finite space in our in our ranges, and we we could go to three or four hundred different products or 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 SKUs if we if we wanted to. Um, so a big internal issue for us is how big should our product range be? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and how diverse. Um, I want to have more and more product. Um, but it's a big, it's a big process to handle. 
So how many roughly do you have in, in each machine then? Does it vary from site to site? And... It depends on the size of the location, how big they, how big the machine is that can fit through the door. Um, so we, I tend to refer to vending machines in, in numbers. So you get a three and a six, right. which it would be uh, three selections on a crisp shelf. Oh, okay, I'm doing right, inverted right. commas because we don't always have crisps fine, fine. Um, you know, with my fingers. <laughs> um, so it'd be three on a crisp shelf, six bars or snacks, and yeah. then on a snack shelf, and then the same for, for cans or drinks or bottles. Nice, or whatever. nice. So you get three and a six, a four and an eight, a five and a ten. Fine. And the biggest ones now are a six and a twelve. Oh, okay. And they are, they're a cool piece of kit, but they're hugely, huge machines. Yeah, yeah, yeah massive. Uh, touch screen, LCD. Oh, wow. Uh, baskets. So touch can, um, cards or cash? Yeah, all of our machines have, have cash that's on them. So uh, no cash anymore? We're, we're going about 65 to 70% of our sales go through cashless every month. Oh, nice. Yeah. Really cool. It's just the way, it's yeah, the way yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. And so how do you, uh, what is a healthy snack? What is not a healthy snack? What is not a healthy snack? Um, crisps, chocolate. Um, Are they unhealthy if I have one sweet. of them? Or is it everything in moderation? Um, well, it's a good point. Probably everything in moderation, but I think it's probably universally recognised that a pack of wine gums isn't healthy. They're so good. Well, they are great. They are good. But no, the thing is about a pack of a pack of sweets is that you're not eating them to be healthy. You're eating them to be bad. I saw you want guy, the sugar. I saw a guy this morning w- walking out of Watford Junction Station, drinking Lucasaid and eating Haribo at ten to nine in the morning. What was the first thought that went through your mind? I wish I could eat. I wish I could just. Think to think of eating that for breakfast. Now, at what point does that pop into someone's mind that they're going to have tantastic Haribo and Lucasade for breakfast? Amazing. Maybe it was the end of his night. That's a good point. Fair <laughs> point. Thursday night, <laughs> Friday <Yeah>. morning. <laughs> so what is what is a healthy snack? Um, there are certain things that we don't like to put in the machines specifically. So we'll we'll aspartame or acetylene K. Free. Oh, okay, right, so right, Artificial right. sweeteners yeah. um, in general are a no, but a lot of the functional product that we um, that we work with, so if it's a gym or fitness or leisure centre, uh, it's difficult to get away from sucralose, for instance. Okay, well, how come are they in what, like the Lucozade energy lot, drinks? A lot, of the, a lot of the, um, as I say, the, the functional products, yeah, 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 you, yeah. you know, the protein shakes, yeah, 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 yeah. use a sweetener like sucralose. Um, it, everything's moving a bit more towards stevia. Um, oh yeah. I can't stand any sweetener. Stevia, sucralose. I, I, can, I can just taste no, it. I'm quite either. susceptible to it. Um, and then, I guess what the, the biggest issue I have is you get the, the kids' products. So you get fruit shoot. Oh yeah, yeah. Everyone thinks fruit shoot's amazing, um, but it's sweetened with acetophen K and aspartame and artificial sweeteners and why do children even need a sweetener for sure in a drink why can't they just have fruit juice and water yeah um do you, you don't sell those no no artificial sweeteners. do you sell stuff for kids so. we've got great ranges for kids in fact actually we're, what we're working on at the moment is something i've been trying to work on for a couple of months but we've had bigger projects to go out um but our parent and toddler vending machine oh, nice. will be a a go-to location or a go-to venue at Westfield. Oh, nice. So Congrats. We will, we will be launching a parent and toddler focused vending machine. Amazing. Um, and this is in West, the Westfield? It uh, will be in Westfield, London. Yeah. yeah. Um, what does that mean? It means that um, it will just be, it won't be much different to our other vending machines, but there'll be more product for toddlers and children um, within the machine. Awesome. So yeah, it's cool. That's yeah, really cool. And cool. so you spent a lot of time developing the range and stuff for the kids. And I don't need to spend time developing the range. I just have to say these are cool brands. They're great. For, they're great Fine. for parents to be able to. Yeah. All yeah. the stuff that we've, you know, you know, there's like sweet corn rings and those carrot yeah. puffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. Um, it might be if if we can, I'd like to get something like a, um, an Aptamil or a Calgate in there as well. So okay. So the best, Just, yeah. why shouldn't this stuff be in a vending machine? No, definitely. You know? And is it, is it branded um, 
parents and toddler. It will it will be a healthy bending company machine powered by touch automated retail. Fine. Automated retail. So yeah. Is that your is that your kind of umbrella term now for the business? Yeah. So we began with the healthy bending company. Yeah. Um, and then one of my clients said to me, can you do some unhealthy vending machines? Because, you know, you're giving us a good service, but I've got to get those chocolate machines out because no one's been to fill them. <laughs> um, and so, obviously, I'm a businessman, so I wanted to Absolutely. carry on growing my vending business. Yeah, yeah. So we created the classic vending company right. brand, still using the same um, visual imagery of our, of our logo with the tags. So we have yeah. the classic vending company. Um, and it enables us to give the customer yeah. a choice. Great. So we don't dictate to people what they should and shouldn't do. No, eat. no, absolutely. We just give them a choice. Yeah. So the classic vending company um, started to place machines um, in the same areas as uh, the healthy vending company. But it, it's really difficult um, to be pigeonholed as a healthy vending company because then, whilst it's great for business, um, we also find that our clients, our business and industry clients, so law firms and accountancy firms and consultancy firms, they're buying their coffee machines from other companies. They don't realise what we do, if that makes oh, sense. Oh, I see. Because they think we're the healthy vending company. So, um, but we're just oh, doing, right, I see. Yeah, yeah. so it, yeah. it's just, it's the difficult, it was a bit um, schizophrenic yeah, yeah, in terms yeah. of our, um, our brand strategy. Fine. Um, so you wanted to do a vending solution and depending on what the customer wants, you stock them with healthy or whatever else they, they want. I went to a public health Milton Keynes event for small enterprises. A um, bit of a networking thing, but just to show people what healthy vending was. Um, and the only inquiry or the only real bit of business that came out of it was we were asked if we could put e-cigarettes into vending machines. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. But my, my, first, my, my <laughs> response was... I don't know if that's ethical, fair enough, or yeah. legal or moral, um, because the, you know e-cigarettes are contain nicotine; it's addictive. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But what we found out was there's a real problem within the NHS, right, um, for the mental health sector, for the acute mental health uh, trusts, because all of the campuses, all the hospitals are going smoke free. A massive drive on smoking cessation right. within the NHS. Interesting. But so you can't smoke in and around the hospital, or no, outside. But or what do you do if you're an acute mental health patient and you're not allowed? You're not allowed out. So what do you do? Yeah, yeah. You can't yeah. smoke. Um, and we've 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 been discussed talking to some trusts that are spending between five and ten thousand pounds a month um, on e-cigarettes. Wow. Wait, yeah. so they buy them in for their... They have to buy them to give them to the patients. Wow. So what we've what we've done is we've created um, a smoking cessation vending machine. Um, so for nice. us, it's not just stacking the machine full of e-cigs. It's um, where we can, where, they, where we're able to. It's um, sugar-free sweets, fiddle toys, stress balls. Amazing. So we started with e-cigs and we're gradually bringing in these other items and working with the trusts that we work with, we're now working with two NHS trusts, two NHS. Wow. So these, so these machine, these vending machines are in a hospital and vending e-cigarettes plus stress relief. Yeah. So products. a couple of, a yeah. couple of, uh, one of the trusts have e-cigarettes and healthy products, great healthy snacks and drinks. Um, and the other trust will have, um, they go live next week and they will just have e-cigarettes to start with. And then we will bring the, the smoking cessation ancillary items, as we would call yeah, it. Yeah, but we yeah. can't do that under the healthy vending company. We no, can't no, no, do no, that no. under the classic <laughs> vending company. Um, so touch, touch AR, touch automated retail is our umbrella, is our new umbrella brand. Great. Um, but we also have our Vend IT model, which is which is when we were asked, could you do SIM cards? Can you do um, calculators in in the university library? And the answer is yes. There's no reason why not. We're just, we're just buying a new SKU, goes on a different shelf, gets a different product code, and the guys at the warehouse just pick and pack it as the machines require. Amazing. So, so now really the focus is um, automated retail, and you don't really mind what products the customers you're placing the, uh, the vending machines in want to vend from it. I, like no, as the shops I, on the high yeah. street close, you open another vending machine. That would be nice because there's a lot of shops <laughs> closing. Um, but it's true. I mean, I think they were like when they 
I'm sure in China they were vending cars, weren't they? I think like you like do your biometrics and then depending on your on your uh, credit rating or the scoring that they give you, they will like open the doors to your car and then you can test drive it. And... In in the broadest sense, um, yeah, technically it is vending in the yeah. the Latin. Absolutely. Word. I think the Latin word for to sell is is uh, bendy, bendy. Right. Right. So <laughs> any any sale is a bend. Right. It doesn't matter where you are. But bend, yeah. I don't. Is it bendy? I don't know. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I mean, you've got like it's just low cost way of, your car. of selling stuff. Like not always low cost though, because sometimes um, you know the machines the machines can be quite expensive. Yeah, yeah but it's cheaper um, than a human. Yeah. And rent on Oxford Street. And, you know, I mean, if you wanted to like, if you wanted to sell the healthy product, healthy snacks on Oxford Street, it's much cheaper to stick a vending machine there than, it's great. I think it's, you know, I think you're going to see more and more. Who do I speak to about putting putting vending machines on Oxford Street? That'd be cool. Stick it out. You know, like also the ticket offices are closing. Well, they will probably close in all the main stations. So like what's going on in there? It's space. In it's space, yeah, where you Absolutely. can stick um, a computer or vending machine and products that people want, which is great. I think you're going to see this more, more and more as time goes on. People have um, – so the way I see it is, yeah, we're a vending company, right? Yes, we do business and industry-led vending solutions. We do snacks and drinks. We do coffee machines, water coolers pop taps, all the things you'd want in your office space. Um, but the conversation more and more is um, is how we can give people solutions to, the, to their problems. And I've always said, I said to clients all the time, we're solutions driven. If you've got a problem with anything, um, let's get to a solution. Like every business should be. Yeah, there, yeah absolutely. Right? Um, we are, the more people we speak to, um, there's always a, an issue with retail, um, the business. We're talking to a couple of universities at the moment where uh, their catering outlets are really struggling. Their and catering, the catering outlets right. are struggling in certain areas of the university. They have to have fresh food. They have to have some hot food, um, but they can't afford the staff. They, do they want to spend money on redoing the kitchen? The kitchen yeah, equipment yeah, yeah, is breaking. Yeah. Um, so... And this is similar to what we did on the Jamie Oliver show. Uh, what did you do on it called uh, Friday Night Feast, right? Fine. What did you do on that? We created a vending machine. I didn't create the vending machine. We used an existing solution. Yeah. Um, and we created a machine for them that vended hot fresh amazing. food. Amazing. Amazing. And fresh food comes out of the machine, yeah. and then and then the consumer can go and microwave it. Perfect. It's and so, very nice food. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was good. And so that is what made on the day by whoever that it was made by Jamie Oliver. Fine. Right? So yeah. in the show they did, um, he went in and he, they can talk to the guys who only had chocolates and crisps at night because it's a call centre. Right, right. And they want fresh food, but the fresh food stops being served at 2.30, 3 o'clock because the cafe or canteen closes. Yeah, yeah. They have a kitchen on site. It's the same with this university. Fine. That was two universities. Right. They have a kitchen. Yeah. Right. They're producing fresh food from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. There's no reason that they can't make that same fresh food, put it into a nice biodegradable, compostable cardboard uh, box, yeah. sticker it up and stock it in the vending machine. Nice. The beauty of the machines, is, this is the cool bit, is that the chef makes the food yeah. and knows that it's going to take two minutes and 50 seconds to microwave that product. So yeah, they yeah. can program the machine, which has got a built-on microwave tower. Nice. To, nice. when they, someone buys Selection 11, it operates the, uh, the microwave for two minutes and 50 seconds. Wow. So you buy Selection 11, the bucket goes up, collects the product, comes down, you take it out, and the microwave pings. And the door opens for you to put it in, and that microwave is timed for two minutes and fifty seconds. Amazing! That's fresh food automated retail. And then you've got—is there like a fridge refrigeration the machine? Thing? Is refrigerated. Amazing! And they stock it daily. Wow! And they, but they don't need a third-party company to come in and give so, them. So they just. Low. So you deliver. You deliver the uh, like the tech, like the the, the vending machine, and it's yeah. their responsibility to develop and make the product. It's all programmable and customizable. 
if if they want to, if they want to um, make the food on site, box yeah. it up, pack it up, and put it in the machine, they can do that. Otherwise, there are plenty of quality providers of oh, they I mean, can deliver it all over London who would jump at the chance. Oh, yeah, there's quite a lot of like these fresh farm produced or like what, farm to fork type mm. food delivery things. That's nice. really cool. And so, you, so you're going to roll that out with a couple of unis, and then if that goes well, it's just the rest it's, of the It's just an, an indicator of the interesting conversations yeah, yeah, yeah. that are yeah, yeah. taking place and the way in which the market is moving. Yeah, no, I think it's great. It's not always snacks and cold drinks. It doesn't no. have to be snacks and cold no, drinks. No, 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 no. So you can, yeah, you can vend anything. Interesting, because then you can start, yeah, serving the food 24 hours, increase sales. 24-7. Love that. Is that the biggest kind of trend you've, is that how like? I think there's a big, I think there'll be a big, big growth in that sector, or a big shift. For, for the, the heated food, the food specifically? I don't see any reason why there shouldn't be. The, the technology's there. Yeah. And people are making fresh food everywhere, so why not? No, Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we should stick one in here. It's true. Although I'd probably eat more, though, if it was if it was readily available. But anyway, I might not. <laughs> <laughs> Discipline. Um, what's been uh, what's been like the biggest challenge you found running your own business, growing it, reacting to all these different trends and probably, business opportunities? Probably similar to the problems that you have running your business. I would suspect. Finance, people, everything, service, everything. Yeah, there's like they don't call it business for nothing. That's true. That's so true. There's good busy and bad busy. Yeah, that's true. However busy yeah. you are for good busy, you're always always bad busy. I mean, we're, we're mean, dealing with like having to change our vehicles because of the ultra low emission zones, and you know, so it's just managing not, managing all of the stuff that comes with running a distribution business and yeah yeah absolutely i mean someone yeah. tried to break into one of the vans a couple of weeks ago so you've got to get the van off the road you've got to hire a van deal with the insurance company and then yeah. you've got to think well okay and then we've got to get the vi- if we get the door replaced then we've got to get the uh it's got to be re-sign written it's just, yeah it's, it's, all, it's all like peripheral yeah. nonsense that stops true, that true. takes your focus off yeah, yeah. what you really want to be doing. But you've got some good support around you, right? Um, I've got a great team. Yeah. I've got a really great team. Um, and I guess, um, I mean, you know my business quite well. Yeah, right? yeah. And I know your business quite well. Yeah, yeah. Because we yeah. speak a lot. Um, and actually not many of our friends or our peers run their own businesses. True. Which is yeah. quite interesting. We, on a, there's only a handful of us. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so one of the best things I the best things that I ever did was start with joining a networking group. Yeah. And I, I extracted myself from being on my own most of the week. Right? When going you started, into, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Going into a room full of 50 other people, 50 other businesses, um, using their services, using their skills, their knowledge, their their services, really, yeah, yeah. Um, where necessary, but also just like having a sounding board. Yeah, um, they're true because when you start a business, I was the same. You start on your own, um, and you're like janitor, the finance guy, the sales guy, the HR guy, like you're literally everything uh, until you start to identify jobs that you can outsource to other people. Yeah. And then you can start building a business. And really? the great thing, the great thing about the networking stuff, and also just having uh, friends that also have their own businesses. So you're like calling you or you calling me and be like, hey, you know, I had this issue, or what do you think about this, or you know, an employee's done that, or how should I deal with this client? It's quite, it's really useful. So yeah, so I think it's important to have uh, people that you can share your experiences with. The most common yeah. thing. Um, I say to my friends or my peers who have their own businesses um, and they tell me they've had a problem. I said, fine, you've had a problem. Just make sure it doesn't happen again. You just learn from it. Win or learn. Absolutely. Your contract doesn't say this. Well, okay, now you know. Your contract should say this. Off yeah, you go. yeah, yeah. It's also the mindset again. because I mean, nothing goes perfectly. And it's all just a journey. 
And as long as you're evolving and getting better every day, it's great. And you're moving forward and you have the right kind of, if you have the right mentality about these things, it becomes, it de-stresses a lot of like the stuff that people get stressed about when they're running a business. I think so. And also the, the key for me is that the client, the client never sees what's going on in the background. As long as the client's getting the best service. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 service, yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter what's going on in the background. No, um, because every business, every business that you're that you're um, interacting with, there's something going on that you wouldn't want to have out. Well, it's just you know, it's just the trials and tribulations of, of running a company. You know, whether it's like getting the product from A to B and something's happened in between, or have you heard? Have you heard? You what, know, what? I mean, McDonald's, that, the bit there, the issues they're having at the moment. McDonald's. Yeah. No. Yeah. Go, no. Go. So they've introduced about I don't know how many weeks ago. It must have been four, five, six. Who knows? Weeks ago, this vegetarian wrap. They've right. Got, like these vegetarian tofu pieces, <laughs> right. and all over the country, people are being served chicken wraps instead of a vegetarian oh, really? tofu wrap. Yeah, because because the pieces of tofu look like chicken, and they can't get there. They they have. I mean, this is a business with like serious systems in place. Of, everything they have do. Tofu wrap sales then gone off the roof. I know. I know two people that have had a chicken wrap who are vegetarian since I read it in the newspaper. And they've never become vegetarian again. Well, they're not very pleased about it. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but, but yeah, no, it's a pleased point. And this, and also, this links back to what we were talking about when we first started. Which, yeah. if you if you watch the founder, which is an excellent film, <laughs> yeah, have you seen it. No, need to watch brilliant it. film. Um, the success of the franchise is in the same thing happening each and every time. Turnkey solution. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a fascinating, repeatable, fascinating reliable. Yeah. Good quality processes. Yeah. They no, do so ch- sell fried chicken now. Who? McDonald's. They've always sold fried chicken, haven't they? Watch the film. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, five piece chicken select. No, it's interesting. Do you um do you have a mentor? I like have, someone to Yeah, I have a couple of mentors. Have you always um, had a mentor? No. Yes, I have always had a mentor. Um my dad. He's yeah. a very good mentor, excellent mentor, if you yeah. listen. Um, and um, because he he went through 30, 40 years of businesses, lots of different businesses, but mainly retail businesses. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I think my dad started um, with drugstores in, 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 the, in the South London. South London? He started with drugstores, and then he went into Cool Grip. Um, and I have uh, Tim, who you know, yeah, uh, yep. business coach. Um, but then I would say, b- being in my networking group, I have up to fifty mentors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've got there are loads of different people who um, I can sound off for different things, and I do it all the time. <clears throat> it's so important, yeah, because you could get quite lonely um, being like the entrepreneur or the founder of the business. And a lot of people don't like sharing their problems and experiences with others, you find. But being able to do that yeah. is, is really awesome. Well, I, I guess one of the men, one of my mentors or one of my sounding boards was always Alan. Yeah. Um, my, my good mate, Alan Beth, um, <laughs> who who joined who joined me in the business and is now my business partner. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're really fortunate that, one, we both know each other very well. Yeah. And we both know um, each other's strengths and faults, um, which means that we can have a really good row and then carry on for the rest of the day. Or, Fair enough. Or just go home and carry on the next day. Great. Um, <laughs> okay. the, the fact that we um, we used to mentor each other when, when Alan had his own business. Ah, uh, okay. Um, a lot. <clears throat> we used to phone each other. Yeah, know? yeah what's going on this has happened right? yeah yeah um and actually we have differing opinions quite a lot which means that on most things that need to be done we end up meeting in the middle or we get we get to the correct solution quite quickly perfect right? yeah, yeah and that's perfect and that's been a recent like the last year or two I think, it's, I think it's just over three years there's three years of wow time and so have you found it really helpful obviously because you were the only guy before have you found it really useful to delegate some of these responsibilities to someone that you trust and you know well 
has that helped you to then focus on what's important then? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think at first it was quite difficult. Um, but then our business has changed so much. Um, the processes and the systems in place. And we've got some really, um, for what we are, we've got some really big name clients. Um, and when you draw up a list of them, it's actually quite exciting. Yeah, it's done great. Some really nice clients. Yeah. Um, but we, we've been able to do that by having um, systems in place. So one of the first things I did when, when I was filling machines on my own from my parents' garage yeah. and I had 13 vending machines or something and I was running around London and I was like, this is ridiculous. I had <laughs> no idea what to put, what to take out to put in these machines or even if it's worth going out just because... I actually didn't know if didn't like, know. the machine was empty so, or not. No, so we, right, we right. invested in telemetry, which was um, a little box in the machine, connects to the motherboard of the machine, SIM card and aerial, Amazing. or an antenna, and it would it would audit the machine a certain number of times a day and tell us what we needed for the machine if it, if someone had switched the machine off. I went to that. Turning up to a machine... It's been switched off, uh, right. and you don't know it's been switched off because the client doesn't let you know, um, or the client has switched it off, or a cleaner has switched it off. But would the telemetry tell you it's off? It's off. Yeah, we'd get power down fails or power down reports. So I'd phone the site and say, "Could you switch the machine back on?" Awesome. Or we'd go in and we'd fix it or do whatever. Um, and then really early on, we said the same thing about cashless. So we put, we I think it was about five years ago. I say we, I was, it was I at the time. I said, yeah. right, I want a cashless reader on every machine. So we are 100% cashless and have been for five years. Great. Did you find that cash was getting stolen or stuff like that? Or um, it was like risky to have cash in your machines overnight? And Again, as soon as I employed somebody else to fill the machines, I invested in lockable cash bags. Was that risk? Yeah, yeah. So we, yeah. we put lockable cash bags on the machine. So once the bag Fine. comes off the machine, it locks. Yeah, you've got to destroy the bag to get to the money. Fine. But now you've got with the cards and all the telemetry, I mean, you can really target, I guess, what sells, what doesn't, what works well in different it's locations. A, and it's like a plethora of You must have loads data. of data. It's Amazing. It's an asset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Um, awesome. That was a really good chat. Thank Thanks. you very much. Yeah, um, I hope it continues me. to go well. And I look forward to a vending machine in our office. That sounds good. I'll, I'll send you some prices. I thought we'd get a trial. Send the, send the prices I'll over. Send, send the prices price. over. Um, what, are you going to do a switch on this? Are you going to get someone to podcast with you? Or the other way around? Um, Talk about your business. Have you done that? Uh, well, I haven't done that yet, no. But we do the recruitment show. So we've done two so far. So maybe once a month we're going to be doing um, some like advice or talk about like recruitment related topics like soft skills, like flexible working, um, stuff like that, like key trends that are going on in work um, and in the workforce because it's all changing so quickly now. AI, robotics, automation. Um, it's really, really interesting. So, yeah, we're going to start doing that a bit more. Cool. And then maybe we might switch the mic up and see what happens. But yeah, no, we'll do that. Excellent. Thank you very much. Pleasure. See ya. Hey, folks, thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe in all the usual places. Bye.